Now we need to implement this helper function, right? The account occurrences. Uh, yes, that. So this is going to receive one item set and a set of transactions. And it's basically, we need to go over and count the amount of times one particular item set occurs across all the transactions, right? So we're going to iterate over the transactions. And again, we are going to use Python sets. So if the item set is a subset of the set that we are checking, then we will increment the count. And that's it. Now we are okay to use the function. Just a couple of things. This function needs the set of the dictionary with the discarded item set. So we have to initialize this here. Um, like this. So it's gonna be indexed also by the size of the item set. And it will start with an empty list. Uh, because uh, then with the value returned by the function, we are going to update this list. Also, we need to define the minimum support. In this example, we can use uh, two out of nine. Um, here I used uppercase. I think we're okay. So let's try that. So it seems to be working. Um, we need to add a, a couple of things. For example, I mean, before implementing the main loop of the algorithm, um, let's update the variables with the just uh, generated uh, outputs, right? So the dictionary with the discarded item sets has to be updated with a um, with a new set. Right? So now we actually have uh, the real set of discarded item sets from the first iteration. Also, um, we need to update L, which is the dictionary with, with all our frequent item sets, indexed by the item set size as well, with uh, F that was just returned by the function, and uh, we need to update the dictionary with the support count of L that's it okay so let's run it again that's fine I'm gonna add a function um, here it's a very simple function just to print a table kind of like in a nice sort of like nice way so for example if we want to print for example uh, if you want to print L let's say we want to print table to check uh, the so far um, if L is correct and with the, the support counts So it's showing our current version, right, of L. In particular, it's showing L1.
now we are going to implement the, the main loop of the algorithm that um, re you have to remember from the previous video um, how this algorithm works but basically recall that we need to generate on each iteration C uh, the set of item sets of size K right then after that those are the candidates and after having the candidates we need to generate the frequent item sets uh, in the item set uh, set of item sets called L right so I can write that down here so we are going to use uh, CK then uh, from CK and actually to generate the CK here uh, we are going to need the join step uh, from LK min minus one. I'm just doing some notes. Uh, and uh, after having CK, we're going to be able to generate LK, um, the frequent item sets. And uh, for this, we basically need to count and uh, we have that function, that helper function already. And uh, after that, we basically are done because we check if the size of uh, LK is greater than one, we continue, but if LK is empty, then the algorithm stops, okay? So let's uh, start the code here. We already understood that in general, each iteration depends or, or in, in the size of the item sets, right? And we've been using this variable um, called item set size. And, uh, but now for the loop, let's basically set K equal to item set size plus one, because we, the loop starts with the size equals to two, right? The size one is the, we call it the initialization that we did before. Um, okay, we're going to have a flag variable called con convergence starting in zero. And uh, here's the loop, right? Um, so the first thing is to generate the candidates. Uh, recall we are in the iteration K so, and we are indexing the candidates by the item set size so we have to use K as keyword as the key sorry and then here we're gonna need a, a helper function call, called we can call it like join item sets we're gonna implement later and this receives naturally L of size K minus one and the uh, again needs the order right remember the way we were generating the, the the join step we needed to sort the item sets according to the lexical order so we need to provide it to the function and after having c then we are able to generate l but for that we are going to call our uh, helper function we previously implement that was called get frequent that um, receives CK, um, the set of transactions, the minimum support, and the set of previously discarded item sets. And this returned, recall that the frequent item sets, the support of them, and uh, the new discarded item sets. So after having that, we are ready to uh, update L. Right, so L is updated with, uh, again, with the index K and with the set of frequent item sets F. Also, we have to update the discarded item sets with K and uh, the new disc. Ones. 
and also we need to update the support. with k and that variable, right? And we just need to check if the len of lk equals to zero, it means that lk is empty, then we can actually use true and false, right? Uh, Okay, so and then we need to increment k in one. So after this, we are going to have all the candidates and frequent item sets on each iteration. Now we need to implement the helper function, the join item sets, right? implement our function join item sets actually we can um, we can call it set of item sets because it's, that is actually what the function is going to do is going to join two sets of item sets uh, later I'm going to change the name in the in the other file so this is going to receive a set of uh, item sets and uh, what else source also the order right so it's going to loop over each of the items each of the item sets within the set of item sets right and this is going to return a list of candidates right which is the output of this of this join process so we are going to again loop right Remember that in this process, we go over each item set, and then for each item set, we compare with all the ones that are after itself in the list. So we need to do here uh, that, right? We need to start from the next position of, of Y, of I, sorry. Um, so we are going to need another helper function that is going to be in charge of joining these two item sets right in particular the item set in position Y and the one in position J we need to also pass the order to the other function so this function let's assume is going to return um, in case the two item sets are joinable is going to return the new item set produced by the join operation but if not it's going to be an empty list so we can check here that if if the len of uh of it out is greater than zero it means that it returned something and we need to append it to our current list of uh, candidates and uh, we are going to return uh, C, right? So that's it for this function. So now we need to implement the helper function called join uh, two item sets. So this function is going to receive two item sets, right? Let's call it IT1 and IT2, and also the order. and. Uh, so this function, the, remember that the first thing it has to do is to sort each of the item sets according to the order, right? So we can do this Python trick here. We can use a lambda function that uh, applies uh, the, the index of the order, right? So basically, um, this function is saying you must sort the two lists according to the position they have in the order list. Okay, so with that, we are making sure that they are sorted according to, to that criteria. 
Um, so now after they are sorted, we need remember that the first thing we have to check if they are joinable. That means that all the items within the sorted item sets are the same except the last one. And in the last one, the one belong, belonging to the second item set must be greater than the last one in the first item set. That's the, the join criteria, right? Which is in our in, in the one of the previous videos. It's actually in the first in the part one of the a priori algorithm. So let's do that. We need to go again let's say over the length of IT1 minus one, right? Because we are going to check just before the last one and uh, we need to make sure that all of them are the same so basically in case any of them are different we are going to return an empty list because in other words uh, the join process cannot be applied here So we are going to be out of the function as soon as we detect any uh, items that are different. If that condition doesn't happen, then we are going to check the next and last condition, which is that the last item within each of the item sets, remember that in Python lists, we index with minus one to get the last position, the last element, I mean, so um, I'm going to copy this. If this happens, means that the join process can be performed. That, that, that is fine because the last position um, or the last item within the item sets are satisfying the condition. So here we must return the new item set. And remember that the new item set was basically all the elements in the item set one concatenated with, with all the elements, I mean with the last element in the second item set. And this I'm applying the sum operator to list. So I need to make sure that both are lists. So again, so this is the item set one. Remember that most of the elements here are the same in both item sets, but the last one. So I need to make sure that I add the last one of the second item set. Okay, so, and we need to make, make sure this function is returning something. So in case that this condition does not, uh, be, uh, is not satisfied, then uh, we just return again an empty list. So I think that's it um, for our helper functions. Up to the notebook where we have the main loop of the algorithm. So let's try it. Sorry, I forgot then we change right the, the name of this function is going to be join set of item sets instead of item sets. Whoa, we have more issues here. Um, ah, because I use minus two, that's that's a mistake, right? It's minus one. Okay, let's go back to the notebook.